Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. We're continuing on in Unit 2. Today we're going to start with the demographic transition model. Now when we deal with AP Human Geography models are always important and the demographic transition model is is going to be uh, really helpful when it comes to thinking about a country, uh, its state of development, and really a, the way in which a lot of elements within that particular society are going to interact and the way in which population is going to play a role in and be a characteristic of development and really some of the social elements that are taking place in that particular country. So when we look at the demographic transition model, uh, oftentimes abbreviated the DTM, uh, basically what it is is a chart that's going to look across time uh, and it's going to predict some changes that might occur in society based upon the births, or the birth rate, sorry, the death rates, and then uh, what's going to happen as a result to uh, the natural increase as a result of the change in births and deaths. And then also with that, a change is going to come in the uh, total overall population of that particular country. And again, what we see is uh, this chart can develop uh, to correlate very nicely with the period of time in which a country is developing. Now, like all models that we look at, no model is 100% accurate all the time and no, no two countries are really ever going to look the same and no country is going to follow through the demographic transition model perfectly. Uh, it's a general idea and really we can only come up with a demographic transition model after countries have gone through the process. So because a lot of Western countries, Western Europe, the United States uh, and you know some Latin American countries as they're beginning to develop have gone through the demographic transition model, we look back on that and we can see historically the trends that have occurred very similar to economics in that you really can't see that countries have, uh, you know, you can't really see that a place has gone through a recession or into a recovery or has hit an economic uh, improvement until after that fact has already occurred. Similar thing with the demographic transition model. You really can't see that a country has moved from one stage to the next until after they've moved through it. Uh, so we'll look at the chart here in just a minute and, and see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. So when we look at the demographic transition model, we're going to be using the elements of crude birth rate, crude death rate, uh, their relationship to each other and how that's going to impact total population. When we look at the demographic transition model, there are uh, traditionally seen uh, four stages within the de demographic transition model uh, and they're all characterized by certain rates of growth. Uh, so in the first stage, we characterize it as a stage of low growth. Second stage, we characterize it as, as a stage of high growth and some might argue that this really is the most crucial crucial stage, uh, the stage of high growth, because if countries cannot move through that period of high growth in relatively short order, then you have the problem of, of overpopulation. We'll talk more about that uh, a little bit in our video. The third stage is characterized by moderate growth, and the fourth stage is characterized once again by low growth. So we see it's a pattern that kind of begins to emerge. Now, the reason that stage one and stage four have both have low growth there for very different reasons, so we need to make sure we pay attention to that. And really, you could say that each of these stages is dealing with development. Uh, stage one, the least developed of countries. Stage four, the most developed of countries. Some begin to argue that we look like we're moving into a fifth stage of development, If you uh, fifth stage of the demographic transition model. If you remember back to the population pyramids, we talked about countries like Japan, who look like they might have shrinking populations. And so when you get that inverted pyramid, then that potentially could throw us into a fifth stage. But uh, again, it's hypothetical. I'm not an expert in the area of demography or the demographic transition model, so I will leave that up to the experts to decide and define for us. Um, and so we'll move on. First, we'll see what exactly the demographic transition model looks like. So this is the graph overall. And again, this is very nice and neat. Uh, it looks like the, you know this is not what any country is going to look like in terms of what the demographic transition model is. But you see here, we have the birth rates and the death rates. I'm not really sure why they pick blue for death rate. Blue typically means good, but whatever. Anyway, so you have the death rates. Uh, you can see that you have this high rate of birth and death here, stage one. And you have this decline in death rates followed by decline in birth rates. And notice what's happening to the total population here. It's, it's steadily increasing as we go through the demographic transition model. So what I, always, what I always say is that this gap between the birth rate and death rates is what is what is the uh, the growth in the population because fewer people are dying. Okay, so this is what the overall demographic transition looks like and so what we'll do today is we'll talk through uh, each one of these stages individually and today we'll probably just get into stages one and two and then we'll pick up 
with stages three and four uh, in another video. So stage one of the demographic transition model, like I said, is characterized by a stage uh, as a stage of low growth. Now the reason for that is because you have both high crude birth rates and high crude death rates, which result in a very low rate of natural increase and also a continually low uh, level of population. This is a stage one country. If a country is in stage one, it is typically characterized as a very undeveloped, very primitive form of society, and most people's uh, occupations will be characterized by some type of subsistence lifestyle. So I guess you would say that's not even really an occupation at all. That's simply just a way of life. It's a lifestyle. There's really no trading. People are uh, living in situations where they are growing things for themselves. They might be bartering a little bit. So very low levels of technology in terms of medicine, agricultural technology, uh, any other form of technology. So very unsanitary conditions in terms of difficulty in getting clean drinking water. Uh, little understanding of, of, um, of medicine or how illness spreads, those types of things. Some argue that there are no countries left in stage one. Some argue that there are. Uh, again, I'll leave that up to the experts to decide. So definitely not going to be an industrialized country at all. Again, it's the most basic levels of, of uh, society. Some might argue that it, you know maybe some pockets of the world are in stage one, but maybe no country overall. You might think of people in the Amazon rainforest uh, their you know little society, their their village, uh, their territory might be stage one, but I, you know as far as I know, I think it'd be very difficult. Uh, it'd be very difficult to characterize any country itself as a, as a stage one country. So again, we look at our demographic transition model. Now notice again we have very high rates of birth and death, and it's a cycle because uh, people ha are having lots of children because of the fact that children die relatively easily. So in these types of societies, it's children that are most susceptible to diseases because they're so young, their immune systems haven't been developed, they don't know about vaccinations, they don't know about inoculations, those types of things, and so people are dying off. And so here's the thing, uh, population, not only does it stay low, but it grows very slowly because people cannot, people cannot survive, uh, at least children cannot survive. And, and not only that, the subsistence lifestyle really can't sustain high levels of population you need more advanced agricultural production in order to sustain larger populations. It's just one of those things that you have to have. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to support the population. We move to stage two. That is going to be characterized by high growth. Again, what begins to happen in a stage uh, two country is that you begin to have a declining death rate. Now, this is different in different parts of the world. Well, if we look historically, the reason you had a declining death rate initially in Western Europe, the United, uh, Western Europe, the United States, uh, is because of increased food production as a result of the second agricultural revolution. Now, there was maybe some understand a little bit better understanding of medicines and things like that, but the initial thing is going to be increased food production, which can sustain larger populations. So people are able to survive, they're able to live longer, we're able to distribute food uh, further across the landscape. So again, you have improved technology, agricultural te technology, you also have improved, some improved medical technology, some basic inoculations and things like that taking place. Improving conditions in terms of sanitation, understanding of, uh, of removing waste and, and keeping waste away from things like drinking water, trying to provide more sanitary conditions, things along those lines. Now here's the thing, the reason it's in characterized by high growth is because this death rate begins to decline, but the birth rate stays similar because the only way the death rate can begin to decline is if if the, the children, the babies that are being born, are surviving. And so where the death rate begins to drop really is going to be in the younger population. So those children are already born as a natural resort of, a result of their lack of dying, you're going to have an increase in population. So that's going to create this wide gap between death rates and birth rates, which is going to result in a natural increase in the population. So again, this causes a high rate of natural increase. So you have the situation here, again characterized. So you notice that the death rates begin to decline, and then if you look at the if you look at the birth rates, birth rates and the decline in birth rates are going to be in reaction to a decline in the death rates. People don't foresee a decline in the death rates, so they just keep having children. As they keep having children, fewer children are dying, and of course that's a positive thing. Uh, but you can't unhave the children that you already had. And so uh, as these death rates decline, 
people begin to notice that particular trend, they say, well, wait a minute, you know, we don't necessarily want to have six, seven kids, whatever it happens to be, so we're going to, uh, we're going to stop having as many kids, and then over generations, uh, people start deciding to have fewer children because they know their children are going to survive. So we see, we begin to see industrialization take place in stage two because uh, you have the improvements in society. You really can't have improvements in society, whether it's uh, improvements in uh, sanitation, improvements in uh, medical care, improvements in uh, the food that's available until you have industrialization. So really, this is very early industrialization that's happening in stage two. And we'll talk, in, uh, if we look at this again, that's mostly Western countries. One of the reasons you have a decline in death rate uh, in later years in the less developed countries, uh, Latin America, Africa, things like that, is because of the spread of medical technologies. So that would be a part of the medical revolution that allows for those people to survive the spread of vaccines and, and inoculations and, and basic medicines uh, to the people in those less developed countries. So Western countries, it's the agricultural revolution. Uh, less developed countries, really the rest of the world, Asia, uh, Africa, Latin America, it's because of the uh, medical revolution that took place. So we're going to go ahead and end it right there with our conversation on the demographic transition model of stages one and two. Again, we'll uh, pick up in our next video talking about stages three, four, and the hypothetical stage five uh, in our next video.